द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह पिछले हफ्तों में असी गल शुरू की गुरु नानक देव के दे फलसफे की असी गल की प्रोफेसर बलविंद पोगल जी नाल, जो हॉस्ट्रा यूनिवर्सिटी में रिलीजन के प्रोफेसर हैं और करंटली कुलजीत कौर बिंदरा चेयर ऑफ सिख स्टडीज नोल्ड करते हैं अज असी फिर बलविंद जी पोगल जी ने आमंत्रित किया अपनी उस गल न जारी रखने प्रोफेसर पोगल यू वेरी वेलकम एंड थैंक्स अगेन फॉर कमिंग टू द स्टूडियो थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी प्रोफेसर पोगल यू स्टार्टड लास्ट टाइम बाय अंडरलाइंग अंडरलाइनिंग द डिफरेंसेस दैट डिफरेंट रिलीजियस ट्रेडिशंस हैव you finished by saying that whatever guru nanak said it came from a source mm-hmm. right and you uh, said that that's a, that's a common source mm-hmm. i would like you to tell us if the source is same if the source is common then why is there a difference in the message or is there an underlying uniformity between all the messages so the form in and of itself by itself mm-hmm. is the same but it has diverse expressions this is the nature of reality is that it expresses itself in diverse forms but each form that is expressed has has the ability to forget the source mm-hmm. or keep the source in remembrance mm-hmm. yes so uh yeah you mean to say that that it's it's only the expression which is different which might be uh, influenced by factors like uh, culture and other things yes well what happens is that ek and mm-hmm. anek mm-hmm. in most traditions are separated the one is above the many mm-hmm. the one is somehow distant from the many mm-hmm. but in sikhi the one becomes the many mm-hmm. and in that process becoming the many through an individuation of the one mm-hmm. there's a forgetting it towards the end perhaps i could talk about that in terms of the creation mm-hmm. there's a hymn that we can talk about directly you know professor as a layman I, I, just trying to understand when uh, guru nanak says turdiwani mm-hmm. uh it said moses got the book from uh, from uh, yeah. above or wherever yeah, yeah. prophet muhammad got that mm-hmm. book shastras they say is the language mm-hmm. of the, the devtas so uh, w- what i'm saying is that source mm-hmm. is is there a uniformity uh, in the message it, it might have a different expression which might have uh, influence of some culture mm-hmm. sometimes or whatever but is is there an underlying uniformity uh, in that message there are themes that are universal and uniform mm-hmm. and usually what they refer to is a way of being in the world mm-hmm. and the way of being in the world is um twofold are you can have the manmuk way of being in the world mm-hmm. where you're remembering yourself mm-hmm. then you're forgetting the source or you can have a gurmukh way of being in the world where you recall the source mm-hmm. now there are different expressions of that true way of being there's n- there's not a, a limit in the cultural expression linguistic artistic expression of that uh, true way of being in the world mm-hmm. uh, so this one source is shared by all the traditions that's where they get their wisdom from mm-hmm. but but let's say uh if in uh, one tradition uh you know uh, women were not treated uh, uh you know uh, th- equally the way they are treated by guru nanak or you know there's a different concept uh, for for gay rights or 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 or, or caste or races right so why is there a difference has god evolved on those issues why should there be a difference so that question is problematic for all the other traditions mm-hmm. that, that separate the one from the many mm-hmm. where god is distant mm-hmm. and he has to intervene into history mm-hmm. so that question is problematic there it's not problematic for the sikh tradition because evolution mm-hmm. is part and parcel of the manifestation of the one in the many as the many mm-hmm. and so evolution is part of the message so you, uh 3000 years ago the source is being communicated in this culture in this climate in this net- ethnicity in this language mm-hmm. in this way mm-hmm. thousands of years later it changes and they talk about jugas yugas mm-hmm. uh, four yugas and that in each one there's a different expression of the truth mm-hmm. and the the understanding changes mm-hmm. so there 
because there's that temporal dimension to Sikhi, mm -hmm. which most traditions look down upon, mm -hmm. Nirgun Sargun, the Sargun is on, on par with the Nirgun, the evolution is there to be seen. Mm -hmm. But there's a, it's not just evolution that's being uh, uh, remembered by the Gurus, mm -hmm. it's also an involution. Mm -hmm. and more about that perhaps later when we develop the <laughs> argument. Let's 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 go to the crux of the message. Tell us more uh, about what is the message of Qurbani. So, unlike a philosophical treatise, mm -hmm. uh, there's not an argument that's built by one logical paragraph then to the next. It's not mm -hmm. a system like that. This is more hymns and songs that circle around key themes and key ideas. Mm -hmm. One of the key themes, one of the core teachings, is to do with Simran, mm -hmm. remembrance. And if I said to you, what is it that you remember? Mm -hmm. Because everybody members, remembers things. Mm -hmm. Everybody is actually doing job. It's mm -hmm. not just religious people who do job, mm -hmm. who do recitation and re remembering. We're just remembering our, our lover's name or objects that we want to have. Mm -hmm. So we're doing job of those objects. We're remembering them. So what we remember is what we love. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it that we don't love the right things? Why aren't we remembering the right things? Mm. I, I'm sorry, uh, Professor, I, I would uh, need a little clarification on that. You said what we remember is what we love. We, yeah. we can have some bad memories uh, as well. Yeah, yeah trauma is, a, is a, a memory that goes on. Mm -hmm. There's a distinction being made about what the ego remembers, okay. which is not what the Gurus are talking about. It's mm. not what the ego remembers. Mm -hmm. It is something to do with uh, something that the e ego forgets. Mm -hmm. Now, let's have a quick, simple definition of the ego. The gurus themselves give it when they say Dukadaru Sukrog mm -hmm. But the pain is, Guru Nanak says, it's very rare for him to come across people who don't put pleasure first and pain afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we can have a simple definition of the ego as that psychological emotional structure that always prioritizes pleasure over pain. Mm -hmm. That we're instrumental in that way, mm -hmm. that we've been taught that way. Mm -hmm. and, and so it becomes second nature to us. But Guru Nanak is talking about a reversal here. Mm -hmm. He's saying we're forgetting something when we start to remember only what our ego wants. Mm -hmm. Pleasure over pain. Mm -hmm. So he gives the example at the end of the Japji when he says, Pavan Guru Pani Pita Mata Tart Mahatta. Mm -hmm. What does the earth give us? Food. Perhaps we can exist without food for three weeks. Mm -hmm. What does the Father give us? Water. Perhaps we can exist without water for three days. Mm -hmm. Bhavan Guru. Mm -hmm. What does the Guru give us? Gives us breath, air. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we can exist with a, without air for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Here's a hierarchy of value here. Most egos remember food. Mm -hmm. They remember that. They forget water, they'd rather have wine, and they don't even think about air. Mm -hmm. So the very thing that should remember is what we've already forgotten, which isn't something extra special outside, far away, it is right here under our nose, through our noses. Mm -hmm. So this reversal is key to understand um, what Simran is really about. What is it that we're going to remember? Uh, it's not what the ego remembers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, I, I, I'm just trying to uh, understand and make it uh, clear for our viewers as well. Mm -hmm. So, so what you were saying, uh, it's like uh, you know uh, something a naturalist would say. You know, you're saying those are the real things. Uh, you know, your and the air, the mm -hmm. water, the land, and everything else is. I, I don't know, explain as Maya or, or or something else which we are going, but. Uh, when you're talking of player, isn't player also uh, something which uh, we seek just as much as water or food? Isn't that a natural instinct? Yeah, food is natural, water is natural, mm -hmm. but air is, there's, there's a, a urgency to the air that we forget. So it's a metaphor mm -hmm. about how we have lost, we have forgotten, okay. viscerally. 
Now, one of my, to give you a, a, a concrete example, one of my students came up to me and said, Professor, I'm a physical trainer now. I, you, well, I've got this great system and you can have the body that you want. Mm -hmm. You can have abs, you can emphasize and get the body that you want. And this phrase really disturbed me. I thought, what does he mean? Why is it disturbing me so much? And I started to realize why it was. Mm -hmm. That's the ego desiring. Mm -hmm. What if we reverse that? Mm -hmm. What mind does my body yearn? Mm -hmm. now, that's not a normal thought for a very health conscious modern lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Everybody wants to have a fit body that looks good. But that's the ego desiring, changing something that's already given. Mm -hmm. And what the gurus are saying is, what is the mind that the body yearns. Just imagine if you ate when you're hungry, you slept when you were tired, and you were in rhythm with the seasons and the days and the nights. Mm -hmm. What kind of mind arises then? Mm -hmm. Much more sharp and concentrated and natural mind. Mm -hmm. Sahaj is a very important word throughout Gurbani. Mm -hmm. And often that means is to remember the natural state of being, mm -hmm. the one that is already given. Mm -hmm. So our forgetting is an add-on. Our forgetting is what the ego remembers. Mm -hmm. And is, is, is our uh, not shunning our hair part of that? that yes, thought? that's exactly right. This is the body that's precious. Mm -hmm. This has already been given. Mm -hmm. And it's in this, remem it's in this body mm -hmm. that Simran lies. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when we forget the body, we start to think about things that we want in life. Then we, uh, gurus talk, that, talk about that state as being man pradesi. Mm -hmm. the wandering mind. Mm -hmm. But they also talk about the beloved mind, mm -hmm. man piare. Mm -hmm. What is that beloved mind? Mm -hmm. And that's the mind that is already given, it's already there. Professor, we'll continue this conversation after a short break. So see Begderu, the way forward. The way forward is thought of it to Swagata, Matt or the host Harjot Singh. Aj Asi Galkarea, prof, uh, religion the professor, Professor Balbinder Singh, Pogal Jidal. So, Professor, before going to the break, you were telling us about Simran. Mm -hmm. so, so, what exactly is Simran? So, Simran, um, remembering the divine, Harka Naam Simran, we have to not forget that. What does that mean? So, Guru Nanak gives us a hymn the four watches of the night, the Vanjara. A soul is traveling and being born again, lives a life, dies, then is born again. So this traveling soul. Mm -hmm. Now in this hymn, he condenses the whole of one's life, mm -hmm. not into just four days, but four parts of the night, mm -hmm. which shows you that the temporal dimension is crucial to what we forget is important. When we forget death, we, our, our priorities in life or what he says, uh, wasting our time. Mm -hmm. When we start to remember death, then we start to actually start to live. So his hymn is to show that the way to be true in the world, the way to remember the world, uh, the divine or the truth, is to have a, a different kind of awareness. So l let's go through this hymn. So he starts off with the first verse talking about conception then birth, mm -hmm. then the third watch of the night is youth, the fourth watch is, is death. Mm -hmm. Now what do we understand by birth? In birth, when we're in the, sorry, in conception, in the womb, everything that we want is being supplied. Mm -hmm. There's no lack, there's no desire. Mm -hmm. Everything is being supplied automatically, naturally. Mm -hmm. And in that state, Guru Nanak talks about the um, fetus as remembering. Mm -hmm. okay. He talks about the fetus as um, doing tap, mm -hmm. penance, doing ardas, mm -hmm. prayer and petition, and doing dhyan live laga. He says that you're in continuous remembrance. What mm -hmm. is this continuous loving remembrance? Mm -hmm. he, the notion of her jyot as an ego isn't there. Mm -hmm. Because he is true to his self, the natural self. The, the body the, self, that's yes, right. So yes. organically, mm -hmm. Uh, you're there by God's command, by hukum. Mm -hmm. That's why you're in the womb. And through that hukum, you're constantly remembering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're born, what happens when the umbilical cord is cut? Then you take your first breath. Now you need air to live, and mm -hmm. you cry. Mm -hmm. The crying is the loss of all that support. Automatic, uh, spontaneous support has gone. Now you have to do things to get that. Mm -hmm. Now you have to actually eat food. Mm -hmm. And so, 
now you're in a state of desire, a state of lack. Um, this state of desire is the beginning of the forgetting. He starts this verse on birth as mm. saying, you forgot to meditate. Mm -hmm. Your dhyana has gone. Now you haven't done anything, you've just been born. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Guru Nanak already says, you've forgotten uh, uh, God, you've forgotten to meditate. Mm -hmm. So this forgetting isn't of the ego, mm -hmm. it's, it's forgetting because you've had a transition into culture and language. And the third verse carries that on. What is it that we do remember? We forget, um, it says, Har ka naam na chitte. What is it that we remember? Tan joban siorit, a chit. We remember wealth and youth. Mm -hmm. So we get attached to that. So now we're, that's, that's our uh, downfall, is that we've got attached to simple things as wealth and youth. And then the fourth verse is that death comes along and um, reaps the harvest. And uh, he ends the hymn like that. So the question then becomes, is that all there is to life? That you're born, you remember, your body is organically remembering. Mm -hmm. You're in tune, you're in harmony with the universe, with the cosmos, is blossoming. Every child has that stunning quality about them. They don't have an ego. And then suddenly we get caught by culture, language, desire. Mm -hmm. And that is a forgetting. Now, that's very important because remembering wasn't the ego, mm -hmm. but forgetting was the ego. Mm -hmm. We got attached to fast cars and youthful mm -hmm. looks, etc. Mm -hmm. So we shift from hukum mm -hmm. to homei. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the beginning of um, our fall. But is, all, is that all there is to our... So every, everybody goes through those four stages in life and their life has been wasted. He says the vast majority do. Mm -hmm. It is very common for us to transition from the spontaneous flow of Sahaj in the womb to a cultural being that's got language and, a, and can say, I. Mm -hmm. It's very common for that transition to happen. Mm -hmm. The question then becomes, how do we avoid this happening? Is there a door out of that entrapment of the mind, of culture, of language? Is there a door? Soda, mm -hmm. that door, is exactly what the Gurus offer and other traditions have said, that there is a way out of that entrapment in home, mm -hmm. in ego, in language, in the desiring of youth and wealth. Mm -hmm. How do we recall what the body remembers? Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, I, I, I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, we have this concept of Rajme Yog. Uh, is, it, is it something uh, what, what you uh, seem to be uh, advocating or at least appreciating as you know, there have been times uh, when people particularly uh, in the Indian civilization Sanatan Dharma or uh, Hindu culture where they were uh, you know uh, going to uh, uh, these mountains or mm -hmm. far off places mm -hmm. and you know we have seen them living in a state of nature mm -hmm. uh, Naga Sadhus mm -hmm. and all is that something you're advocating here? Not at all. Mm -hmm. So the remembrance isn't to do the special sacrifice. The remembrance isn't to return to that natural remembrance of the body isn't to return to nature. Culture is a part of the expression of the divine oneness. Mm -hmm. Language, diversity, um, uh, cultural, artistic expressions are all part of that one. It's not against that that you remember. That's, that's the tradition for the same uh, uh, millennia before Guru Nanak, that mm -hmm. renunciation meant the only way you can remember is by putting away the world and living in the caves and in the forests. Mm -hmm. This asceticism is internalized. Mm -hmm. You don't have to leave physically, mm -hmm. you have to have the internal renunciation. Mm -hmm. And the remembrance of that door, where is that door, is to do with um, a sacrifice internally. Mm -hmm. So. You have to live in the world, but be not of the world. Mm -hmm. Living in the world, we can get uh, drawn away by attachment and um, uh, of, of uh, youth and wealth, as it says in the hymn. Mm -hmm. So he, I mean, the the hymns talk about. Um, okay, then how do we instigate that reversal? How do we remember? How do we stop? Mm -hmm. First thing is to stop, is to pause. And what what is the door? In a hymn um, by Guru Nanak, he says, Pain is the door, anger is the guard, 
hope and anxiety are the two shutters. Maya is the water in the moat, and in the middle of this moat, he has built his home. The primal Lord sits in the seat of truth, right in the world, in Maya. Mm -hmm. That's where God sits. Mm -hmm. The true one sits there. He sits in our body, but we never look at pain, so we never get introduced to him. We never look at anger and sort those issues out, so we never get introduced to him. We constantly deny that and we carry on after pleasure. So the first reversal is to put pain, um, to face our own pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the, the trigger to find the door out of the entrapment that we find ourselves in. And then he says, in the midst of hope, remain untouched by hope. This is the way to remain dead while yet alive. Mm -hmm. So here's, that's the, that's, you know, when the yogis have a social death mm -hmm. and they go to renounce. Mm -hmm. What they're renouncing is their uh, uh, social responsibilities and their duties. That social death is internalized in the Sikh tradition. Mm -hmm. It's a death within, and that, then you can be truly socially responsible. So it's not against the world. But it's to do with not an ego remembering, oh, I must remember God and, and carrying on. Mm -hmm. That's there, but the remembrance should lead to something beyond the ego, i.e., uh, the way to ma remain dead while alive. Mm -hmm. So this death is a death of the ego mind, mm -hmm. the wandering mind. Mm -hmm. And in the wandering mind, um, how do we convince it to pause? That's the key question. Mm -hmm. and, and life itself is teaching the ego that it can't get what it wants. Right. Uh, Professor, when you say uh, wandering mind, yeah. Wandering from what? Let, 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 let me ask you this. Uh, certain uh, instincts, uh, lust, sexual desire, right? That uh, might as uh, much be a natural desire as, as food uh, and hunger. So uh, uh, putting uh, restraint on that, restriction on that. Is that getting away from that natural remembrance? Right, so that's an important word you use was restraint, mm -hmm. uh, not eradication. Mm -hmm. So Sikhs aren't celibates. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in uh, entering a monastery where you take a vow of celibacy to uh, get rid of those desires. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the restraint is there. Mm -hmm. You have kashera. Right, yeah. and, and you have relations with, with yes. you have those relations, yeah. and you're saying that according to Sikh tradition, accepting those relations, accept, accepting those restraints, is part of uh, that remembrance. Yes, hmm. uh, I mean we can live with the relationships, but we all get angry and we all uh, um, say things that we don't really want to say or regret saying, and do things that we regret doing mm -hmm. because our ego gets out of control. Mm -hmm. So the restraint is on the ego, not on the thing mm -hmm. that uh, uh, any aspect of the world that is deemed to be, that leads to lust or thing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, vices. So there's no problem with being in the world, but how do you be in the world mm -hmm. with honesty? with integrity, with compassion, with kindness. Give Sichiyara Hoya, give Kure to Tepal. That, that, that's uh, exactly uh, what I was going to ask you. Yes. You know, it's, it's very fundamental for us to understand what is it that, uh, that that's virtue as, as defined by, uh, by God, right? Mm -hmm. That he, which he recognizes mm -hmm. as, as a virtue. Uh, give Sachyara Hoye, give Kure to Tepal, which is the uh, uh, right way, mm -hmm. uh, right? And uh, we will talk more about this after a short break. Sure. So say Vegdero, the way forward. The way forward is Thoda Bohut Bohut Swagat Hai, Main Thoda Host Harjot Singh. Uh, Professor, this is very important for us to understand that what is it that uh, is seen as a virtue? Does, does God really like to be worshipped? And, and why, you know, in all the religious uh, books that we see, you know, there would be a little something about uh, good conduct. I'm not saying there won't be uh, at all. There would be, but not as much as remembering God, as much as worshipping God, thanking God. 
why is that? If, if the system has been created by God himself, why did, does he want to hear you know, his praise and being worshipped all the time? It is not the case that God wants this to happen. Mm -hmm. not, not, there's no desire. God is indifferent to this in many regards. It's, it's not um, uh, a lack mm -hmm. that he needs this, the, this praise, but it's more to do with our state of being in the world. Uh, one could just simply say praise is gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, I desired uh, uh, these Nike trainers until I saw somebody with no feet. Mm -hmm. I suddenly lose that desire and realize that the feet that I have are a blessing. And I am grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Then I give praise that, oh, at least I have feet. Uh, you, you know, Professor, that, that's, that's, you know, uh, what uh, layman, you know, youth nowadays, you know, uh, I say uh, the problem is not uh, that people are moving away, younger people are moving away uh, from a particular religion, but generally people have started, you know, questioning uh, the whole uh, concept of God uh, in itself and, you know, uh, what. Uh, they, they, they don't understand what to believe and mm -hmm. th that's part of the reason we are having these di dialogues to uh, to bring uh, to them what what is mm -hmm. the actual message mm -hmm. because uh, you know people very strongly believe that when, when we say turdi mm -hmm. or when we say god gave those uh, books if what, what does he want he want us to be happy have a nice life be good human beings you know, have uh, virtues, character, because if that was it, that is what he would have focused at. Uh, at. Out of 14, 30 pages, you know, 1400 uh, would have been talking about your conduct all the time. And then at some end say, hey, say thank to God as well. But if he is himself sending those messages, you know, majority, 95% of those messages are, if, if, if it was Guru Nanak uh, talking himself and he's telling us that show gratitude, that's a different thing. But if he's sending the message and he's saying show this gratitude to me, why, why is that? He's not saying show this gratitude to me. Mm -hmm. He's saying how to be true in the world. Okay. And how to be true in the world is uh, being grateful in the world. It's, it's um, you're talking about uh, a reversal of the ego's desires. Mm -hmm. uh, when the ego comes to pause and you realize that you just missed the crash, that you become grateful that you, you're alive and then you forget all the worries. So it's not as that God's asking for that. It's inbuilt in the way uh, um, uh, the creation is made is that remembrance of the divine is the forgetting of the ego. Mm -hmm. That's what is required. Now, you, um, you, religious traditions with their rituals and uh, all the uh, paraphernalia and the, this, this isn't necessarily uh, um, required. What's required is the spontaneously of true love, of being in the world creatively, without fear, without hate, etc., as the Mul Mantra says. Now, that mode of being in the world is what they constantly sing about. Mm -hmm. And how do we get there? Mm -hmm. And there's more to it than just simply praising. I mean, we praise when we're loving. When we're loving, that's when the ego is at its least, mm -hmm. because we're thinking of the other person. So when I say, I love you, it's almost like an oxymoron, because the ego cannot love. Mm -hmm. The ego is for itself. It wants pleasure rather than pain, whereas love always involves pain and sacrifice and loss and uh, uh, understanding of that and acceptance of that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the ego's mode of being in the world is constantly consumptive. Mm -hmm. And it's that that keeps being broken up by life itself, by the temporal frame of structure. The four watches of the night shows you that you're going to be dead soon. You know, you, 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 you remembered God, then you forgot as soon as you were born. You got lost in language. You got lost in what language can label as wealth and youth. And then you die and that's it. Before that happens, you should remember something. Mm -hmm. So the hymns are not saying worship God. The hymns are talking about how to be in the world for the next evolution. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Guru Amar Das has a beautiful hymn where he starts to talk about that. Ekam ek apupaya, dubida duja trebid maya, choti pauri gurumaka uchi sacho sach kamavnia. In, in the beginning, the one made itself. Mm -hmm. That's when the body is there. Dubida duja trebid maya. Then there's a loss. 
then you, you start to forget because there's been a split, dubida, there's duality now, this subject object. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the body, like the womb, mm -hmm. when it's born, it forgets. Mm -hmm. This is part of creation. That forgetting is part of creation. But there's also the the fourth step, the mm -hmm. highest step. So with uh, duality and maya, symbolic world, lang language, getting trapped by language, and what all we can desire, um, we have to remember death in that life. Mm -hmm. And that's what, how it means to be uh, um, uh, dead while alive. And that fourth step mm -hmm. is the gurmukh. So there's a, there's, there's, there's a purpose in creation. Mm -hmm. You have to move beyond manmukh, mm -hmm. somebody who's got trapped by the mind, which wanders constantly desiring this, then desiring this, then desiring this, to the beloved mind, which is the decentering of the ego or the death of the ego, mm -hmm. the restraining of the ego, in in terms of the remembrance of guru, mm -hmm. the air of guru, right? Mm -hmm. Remembering that, and that that's that's a stage of evolution. That's a development. That's mm -hmm. the fourth step. Jyoti pauri gurumukha uchi sacho sach kamavnia. What does the gurumukha do? He doesn't worship. Mm -hmm. His true deeds are a form of remembrance and gratefulness and worship. Mm -hmm. So the uh, uh, Nadar and Karam are constantly talked about mm -hmm. throughout uh, the, the Guru Granth Sahib. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Edward, uh, you know, be, be really helpful for us, uh, you know, again, a, a, as young people, that if, if we understand the, the context, you know, uh, in 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 uh, Sikh tradition, uh, we have uh, four tenses, right? Ad such, jugad such, habi such, nanak hosi be such. So jugad such, uh, uh, we're talking about past tense, mm -hmm. uh, present, and future, and then there's ad such mm -hmm. before anything was mm -hmm. started. Now uh, to to understand why uh, you know this uh, the whole thing is created, uh, why the world is created, why the human life is created, and what is it that God really values, we we, we will uh, please tell us a little bit about this. So, does it say anything about uh, when, when there was nothing, and there was just uh, we call it God or whatever? Is yeah. there is there a duration that uh, any tradition has uh, defined or yeah, in, given uh, any hints? One of the hymns. See, Arabad Narabad Dundu Kara, Daranagaga na Hukamapara, Na Dinarain na Chandana Surj Sun Samad Lagaida. In the beginning, for trillions of years, mm -hmm. there is Sun Samad, mm -hmm. this uh, absolute void. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just goes on for a long time. Then, the, in that uh, uh, darkness, mm -hmm creation comes to birth. So there, th before the creation, uh, there is uh, this entity, yes. God, yes. and there's, there's now... Uh, there That's the ekam ek apupaya. Mm -hmm. So the, the one exists, ik mm -hmm. exists, then it becomes onkar. Mm -hmm. And the onkar is entering into becoming the many. Mm -hmm. Nirgun, sargun, chautapad, sunsamad, nirbanipad mm -hmm. becomes sargun. Mm -hmm. becomes a uh, uh, language, people, ethnicities, mm -hmm. uh, all but, that. But Professor, a way the Abrahamic uh, traditions have, uh, you know, uh, this belief that some 10,000 years back, uh, God created the world uh, in six days. He created mountains, he created sun on the fourth day, he created man and from a part of uh, his body he created the woman. And then uh, we uh, see the uh, scientific uh, theories, you know, they call theory of evolution and all. And uh, you know, with with the radio testing and everything, we have seen that the, that planet Earth was uh, created some 4.5 billion years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, life started some 66. Uh, uh, life started some 370 million years ago. Humans they came in human mm -hmm. from around 66 million years ago. So does the Sikh tradition agree with uh, this science evolu uh, theory of evolution, the science, or we have a theory? Of Not all. only is the, I wouldn't say agreement, I'd say resonance, mm -hmm. much more better resonance than other traditions. Mm -hmm. But it also outstrips the scientific narrative. Okay. On the NASA website, mm -hmm. it says that there's 73% of something. 
and there's 23% of something else, then there's 4%, and then of that, there's 0.03% of something else. It breaks it down to these four categories. What is the, se the 96%? 73% mm -hmm. is dark energy. 23% mm -hmm. is dark matter. Mm -hmm. We don't even know what that is. Those, that's 96% of the universe, we don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. 4% are, 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 are the visible galaxies, the, the matter, the planets. And of that 4%, 0.03% is the uh, higher elements, tungsten, carbon. Mm -hmm. And science is trying to measure the universe by that 0.03%. Mm -hmm. And it's realizing that, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. there's so much darkness and energy that we can't account for. Sun Samad, mm -hmm. Ek, um, ek, mm -hmm. that oneness is the major thing that is everywhere. This is the 96%. And it has this expression through the 4%. Mm. So this oneness becomes the many. So um, remembering Simran mm -hmm. is to do with remembering that one, mm -hmm. which is in our bodies, which is the invisible 96% of energy. Professor, we'll continue this after a short break. To see Vegdero, the way forward. You know, the way forward is Toda Firtu Swagata, Matt Toda host Harjot Singh. So, Professor, before going to the break, you were uh, uh, talking about um, uh, science and how, how um, Sikhi looks at uh, the, in the, whole, uh, uh, the whole thing and what is not um, explained by science. Mm -hmm. Tell us further. I said that the Sikhi is, is more in tune with science than most traditions because it's just more contemporary recent. Mm -hmm. and recent. And for example, neuroscience starts to talk about the very divisions that the four hymns, the, the four watches of the night talk about, and also the hymn by Guru Amar Das that I recited, Ekam Ek Apupaya. Mm. How does it do that? Well, uh, one, one of the psychologists and neuroscientists and economists actually, uh, Daniel Kahneman, talks about how there is an experiencing self, which is the body, the body experiences, mm -hmm. and then there's the remembering self. Mm -hmm. Now this remembering shouldn't be confused with Simran. Mm -hmm. This is the ego remembering. Mm -hmm. And that's the mental self. So remember I talked about how rare it is, how common it is for everybody to be born to enter a language. Everybody does that. Everybody identifies through a language and then they get trapped mm -hmm. and they forget the one. Mm -hmm. So he calls that the remembering self. It's the story that the culture tells in a particular language in a particular place. But he says that that story has to happen in this body. Mm -hmm. And this body he calls the experiencing self. He calls this slow thinking and he mm -hmm. calls this fast thinking. Mm -hmm. So the body is fast. A flight or fight, right? The mind is slow, it ponders, reasons, argues, etc. So this remembering self with slow thinking is de-linked mm -hmm. from the temporal experiencing self. This is a metaphysical structure. I, self, mind, who am I? These are all ideas, they're not real. Mm -hmm. They have to be lived. Mm -hmm. The living self doesn't relate to the story that one tells. Mm -hmm. So the temporal structure, the experience that we have, no matter how tra traumatic or dramatic or changing they cause in our life, they hardly affect the story. If our story is, you know, you have a cynical outview, life is horrible, etc. Mm -hmm. Not many things can change that. So it becomes very important of learning how to upset mm -hmm. our cognitive addiction to a particular story and ego. This is Homé. Mm -hmm. The hookum in the body mm -hmm. challenges that. How does Guru Nanak bridge that gap? Mm -hmm. He talks about Kirtan mm -hmm. and Seva. Mm -hmm. And what are Kirtan and Seva see, and Simran? Mm -hmm. What one does there is the body is affective. Mm -hmm. It feels. Mm -hmm. The mind is thinking. It mm -hmm. rationalizes. Mm -hmm. We have to connect the mind, that uh, the wandering mind, back to the beloved mind, which is the mind that is organic to the body, mm -hmm. which organically remembers the one. And that integrates through feeling. When we sing, we let go. Mm. When we feel, we start to get in tune with our bodies. So the Simran is 
not just a mental idea of remembering God. Mm -hmm. It is a socio-religious, ethical, political practice mm -hmm. that involves Kirtan, Seva, Simran. It involves uh, a Langar. Mm -hmm. it, it, it involves a whole orientation that gets us to feel, mm -hmm. live according to our feeling. And that's where Pyar and the beloved mind comes. Mm -hmm. And that's when we feel grateful. Mm -hmm. So that's how, the goal. How do you become Gurmuk? Mm -hmm. Is to integrate the wandering mind with the, the beloved mind. Or in Daniel Kahneman's term, integrate the remembering self, fast thinking, with the experiencing self, uh, uh, sorry, slow thinking, with fast thinking. Mm -hmm. So that integration of mind with body is crucial mm -hmm. for awakening to the Gurmukh mode of being. Uh, Professor, we, we uh, you know, uh, uh, again uh, coming uh, to to the to the basic thought basic understanding so so we say that uh, uh, this god existed before uh, everything else and then he created mm -hmm. right what what was the need of that creating why did he create because he can <laughs> okay i don't think there's an answer to that mm -hmm. it's just the way things happened mm -hmm. and unfolded similarly with um uh, in the Indic traditions, the fall, mm -hmm. if you like, the fall into language, into time, into history, um, that isn't explained. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Abrahamic tradition, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, they, they eat of the tree of knowledge. There's some kind of explanation mm -hmm. for that kind of fall. So, but this God who created, is, is it the same uh, uh, you know, uh, figure or, or something uh, which is seen as in the Abrahamic traditions? Or is that God seen uh, differently here? It's very different. Um, there's a resonance mm -hmm. in terms of the mystical dimensions in the Abrahamic traditions, the Sufis, the uh, Kabbalists and uh, the Christian mystics. Mm -hmm. um, those people start to interpret the God uh, beyond the concept. Meister Eckhart said, please God, take me beyond the concept of God. <laughs> mm -hmm. Take me beyond God. Because he realizes the entrapment of a particular language in a particular time spoken by a particular gender or race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he realized God is much beyond it's in all times so mm -hmm. w the limitations are seen by the mystical dimensions in those traditions but the orthodox tradition is that god and cr uh, creator and creation are separated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the difference in the sikhi is that they're together mm. and um, the evolution you are ev uh, evolving um, as an expect uh, expression mm -hmm. of that combination of nirgun and sargun Mm -hmm. of ik onkar mm -hmm. and uh, uh, therefore one doesn't have to leave the world to try and get to the transcendental realm the transcendental realm is in the imminent realm mm -hmm. they come together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your mind needs to be integrated in your body mm. Uh, mm -hmm. for Simran to occur. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Professor, there, there are two uh, major uh, schools of uh, thought, uh, something uh, which is called deism uh, these days, and then there is uh, predetermination. Uh, uh, deism is that God created and then it does not interfere mm -hmm. uh, in the daily lives. And then uh, there's something uh, which says that everything is predetermined. Mm -hmm. Is that predetermined? Is that what hukum is? or how how do we yes um oh give sichara hoe give kure to te pa hukum rizai chalana nanak likya naal you're to walk in god's will walk in the divine intelligence organic in your body according to what is written what is that writing so your body has laws we can't just feed it anything we want. It has to have certain foods. Mm -hmm. We can't put the diesel that we put in our car into our bodies. It wouldn't work. There's already laws that are written. They're all invisible. Mm -hmm. But they're not just physical laws mm -hmm. that we have to have harmony with. There's also um, psychological laws and spiritual laws. Now, these are all determined. Mm -hmm. But it's how you live that creates what happens next. Karmi ave kapra nadri mok tohar. So you can work to put the shirt on the back on your back, but ultimately the ends of your life are determined by what you have done mm -hmm. in previous lives, and that's that becomes back as you. That's what it said in the uh, the earlier hymns that I quoted as well, mm -hmm. that uh, the hukum, the command, 
uh, Nadr and Karam, grace and works, are two narratives that are joined together. Mm -hmm. Such that your free will is important because you can change your destiny. If you act in a particular way and don't change and you carry on acting that way, mm -hmm. you're going to write your future. Your mm -hmm. future is going to end up, like say if you take smoking, mm -hmm. you'll end up eventually as an addict. Mm -hmm. Now that, that's, that's, that's a destiny that you've just created yourself. Mm -hmm. So all these destinies that are, are created because of the way we're acting. That's why the question is how to act truthfully mm -hmm. becomes so important. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, most traditions will say, uh, when you have the Abrahamic tree, God is separate from the um, creation, then grace and works take on a different kind of valence. In the Sikh tradition, they, they come very close together. So free will and determinism are very uh, um, uh, two narratives to understand one process. Mm -hmm. uh, we need both a divine narrative and a human narrative to understand what's going on. Just the human narrative doesn't work because then we end up saying things like chance and coincidence, etc. Mm -hmm. Which is just a secular way of acknowledging that you don't know what you're talking about and you can't really understand the way things happen in life. Mm -hmm. um, so there are things that are always unknown. That unknown is understood as the working of um, uh, uh, the hukam. Mm -hmm. as a divine order that uh, but there are laws that we can discover through our practice but but uh, our Sikhi when we say uh, it's it's all uh, uh, they're, they're working together so uh, there's God's intervention on your getting yes. that fame uh, as yeah. well yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so uh, this hukam cannot be written down Mm -hmm. So the human laws imitate that, but uh, the human laws are only, should only be understood as guidelines. Mm -hmm. That's why there's, there's room for flexibility and cultural development in Sikhi, because mm -hmm. they realize that the laws can't be written, which is very different from other traditions where they stipulate that this must be done, this must be done for all time. Mm -hmm. It's very different in the Sikh tradition, it's more organic, it's mm -hmm. more creative, it should be more organic and more creative and uh, develop. That's mm -hmm. why you see an immense creativity in the Guru period from mm -hmm. Guru Nanak to Guru uh, Arjan Hargobind mm -hmm. to Guru Gobind Singh. Mm -hmm. There's this creativity of transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, these are uh, very profound and very <laughs> uh, important topics. They need uh, more time. And uh, we, we really appreciate your coming here, uh, talking about these issues. Uh, we will uh, continue talking about these issues. Aj asi gal kiti Guru Nanak de falsafe di Sikhi de basic falsafe di asi samjhan di koshish kar rahe hain ki sada Sikh jeda mat hai, o in in uh, in uh, particular topics upar issues upar ki kenda hai. Asi Professor Sabnal agave vi gal karte rahenge, tusi vekte ro the way forward.